She was not born to be queen, but she became so much more than the ceremonial head of state of a mid-sized European country. Elizabeth Alexandra Mary Windsor, Queen Elizabeth II, reinvented the British monarchy and may have saved it. Elizabeth was already 10 years old when another royal drama led to her becoming heir to the throne. In 1936, her uncle, Edward VIII, abdicated to marry the American divorcee Wallace Simpson, and the royal line shifted to her father, George VI, and so to her. The young Princess Elizabeth was already a public favorite. During the Second World War, she had worked to raise the country's morale, and she had also served as a volunteer in the war effort. I am sure that you are often thinking of the old country to make the world of tomorrow a better and happier place. Her marriage to Philip Mountbatten, an anglicized member of the deposed Greek royal family, gave a war-weary country something to celebrate. And the children the marriage produced, first Charles and then Anne, secured the future. Elizabeth's coronation in 1953 was the first ever to be televised. Its combination of ancient ceremony and glittering glamour cemented her as the personification of Britain's post-war rebirth. And it began a reign with a singular purpose. I declare before you all that my whole life, whether it be long or short, shall be devoted to your service. Elizabeth's reign would be the longest ever in a royal bloodline that goes back over a thousand years. But the royal ride was sometimes bumpy. The stability and continuity the monarchy was supposed to provide began to look shaky as one by one the royal marriages broke down around her, her sister Margaret's, her daughter Anne's, her son Andrew's. They all ended in awkward divorces. None was uglier than the breakup of Prince Charles and Diana Spencer. The long public unraveling of the marriage of the heir to the throne seemed to shake the very foundations of the royal household. When, in the early 1990s, Windsor Castle also went up in flames, the Queen's famous stoicism was tested. 1992 is not a year on which I shall look back with undiluted pleasure. <clears throat> In the words of one of my more sympathetic correspondents, it has turned out to be an annus horribilis. However horrible the year, the Windsor Castle fire and the public complaints over the skyrocketing repair costs produced a turning point in royal history. Monarchs normally collect taxes, but from then on, the Queen agreed to pay taxes on her income. Royal behavior was also changed by the shocking death of Diana in that Paris car crash. The national outpouring of grief seemed to highlight the emotional gap between the queen and her people. Elizabeth did much to repair the damage with a single bow of the head to the passing coffin of a popular princess. No one who knew Diana will ever forget her. Millions of others who never met her, but felt they knew her remember her. There would be other challenges, one of the most serious centering around the wife of one of Diana's sons. When Prince Harry's biracial American wife, Meghan Markle, complained of mistreatment by palace officials, the couple renounced the royal life and moved to California. When Elizabeth's husband, Prince Philip, who she had described as her strength, died, she was left alone to face the last chapter of her reign. Over seven decades on the throne, Elizabeth redefined the monarchy, remade it for a more modern, less deferential age. And in the process, she became not just Queen of Great Britain, she became, in a way, Queen of the World. Mark Phillips, CBS News, London.